My name is Ashley Schaefer. I am 35 years old. I live in Michigan with my husband um, and my two daughters, Charlotte and Eleanor, um, and our two dogs, Brady and Oakley. Um, I am a registered intensive care unit nurse. It all happened last year in February of 2023. We found out we were expecting our third child um, and I was feeling really good at the beginning of my pregnancy. And then around nine weeks, when, nine weeks pregnant, um, I came home from work one morning because I used to work in the night shift and my ankles were really swollen. Um, I just thought it was because I was on my feet a lot. So I kind of elevated them and they went down and I thought nothing of it. Um, two days later, the same thing happened. Um, so I ended up having an appointment with my OBGYN that Monday and I brought up this swelling to him and he was pretty concerned. He said it was too early in the pregnancy for it to be like preeclampsia related. So he ended up ordering a bunch of blood work and tests. Um, my potassium level came back really low. It was like 2.5 and it's supposed to be above three. So I had to go to the ER um, a few times to get potassium supplements um, just because it kept dropping, even though he had me on medications. Um, uh, but the biggest thing that happened was we did genetic testing on the baby um, and that came back inconclusive. They diagnosed me with um, what's called copy number variant. There's only 38 confirmed cases out of 2 million. Um, and what that means is there's basically too much of my um, DNA in the sample, which usually means there's either a blood cancer or a tumor. Um, so they ordered a full body MRI because all of my blood work looked normal. It didn't appear to be going the blood cancer way. Um, and when I got the MRI done, it showed a um, tumor the size of a football on my right adrenal gland. Um, so I had surgery May 31st of 2023 to have that tumor removed. Um, I was in surgery all day that day. I lost uh, like um, 21 liters of blood. Um, very unstable. They closed me partially and then sent me up to the ICU to stabilize. Um, the following morning, unfortunately, our baby passed away. Um, but, you know, I'm very grateful for him because without him, I wouldn't have had all the tests and procedures done as quickly as I did. Um, the next day I had surgery again, just to close up my incision and make sure that um, everything was cleaned out. And then a week later, I had a third surgery. This time it was open heart surgery because part of the original tumor broke off and was blocking my pulmonary artery and it was making it really difficult for me to breathe. And then three days later, they came back and diagnosed me as stage three adrenal cortical carcinoma, which is a very rare and aggressive form of adrenal cancer. There's only usually one in a million people diagnosed each year. I cried a lot prior to surgery. Um, and then, I mean, after surgery, I just kind of went numb. Um, you know, I, I knew what happened the moment it happened when I delivered Noah. Um, and, but it was, you know, the hospital was great. They, they let me hold him and like spend as much time as I wanted with him. Um, so that was, I was grateful for that. And the hospital, they actually made us a memory box of him. It had, um, his footprints in it, um, a blanket that he was wrapped up in that we got to hold him in, um, and a few other really sentimental items. And it, it actually took me almost two months to actually open the box and look at it. And that was at the time I just broke down and, and cried at that point in time. So it did take me a while, um, to, to grieve him just because, everything was just happening so quickly. I just didn't feel like I had time to process anything. You know, we were going from me being a healthy 33 year old, um, pregnant with our third child, really excited. And all of a sudden I'm told, you know, you've got a massive tumor that needs to come out. Your baby may not survive. And oh, by the way, now you have stage three cancer and it's one of the rarest forms of cancer you can have. There's very limited data and treatment options for it. And I just felt like my head was constantly spinning that I, I was trying to process everything and it was, it just felt impossible. I was in the hospital for 15 days. I had surgery May 31st and June 13th is when we got the diagnosis of stage three adrenal cortical carcinoma. Um, and I was, you know, after I was discharged home, I was doing well recovering. And then I met with the oncologist in the middle of July of 2023, and they wanted to start me on chemotherapy. And I was a little confused as to why, because, you know, the surgeons has, had both said they got clean margins and that I was technically cancer free. So I was like, why do I need surgery or why do I need chemotherapy if I'm cancer free? Well, what ended up happening is um, I got a CAT scan 
two weeks later and it showed that the two, the cancer had returned, but now it was in my liver and they diagnosed me stage four. Um, so at that point in time, I knew I just kind of had to do whatever I could to, to help myself and to try to beat this, um, at, at the hospital that I was currently at, um, or previously at, I should say, I would have only been my doctor's third case of this kind of cancer. Um, and I wanted to really find a specialist in it because there aren't very many in the United States. Um, luckily I found one at university of Michigan hospital, Dr. Gary Hammer. Um, he's a specialist in ACC. And so I got an appointment to see him quickly. Um, I saw him, he reviewed my entire chart, my entire case and set me up to start chemo, um, two weeks from our, um, initial appointment date. I started with um, what's called EDP. It's atopicide, doxyrubicin, and cisplatin. Um, and then they also had me on a medication called mitotain, which is the only FDA-approved medication for adrenal cortical carcinoma. Um, it goes back to like the 70s, but it's the only approved medication. So I did two rounds of chemotherapy um, and then got a scan, and it showed that my tumors in my liver were growing just a little bit. Not much, but they were growing a little bit. Um, and they did more genetic testing on the tumor and found that it should be more responsive to immunotherapy. So after two rounds of EDP, I switched to immunotherapy and did Keytruda for, um, a total of seven rounds. Um, in the middle of the Keytruda, they switched me from the Mitotain to an oral chemotherapy medication called Cabomedics. Um, which ended up giving me a bunch of complications as well. It was causing a lot of um, high blood pressure and swelling in my lower extremities. So we were kind of going on and off of that. Um, I also underwent 10 rounds of radiation on the right side of my liver because um, that was where the largest tumor was. And then in May of this year, um, 2024, I had surgery to remove the left side of my liver because that was where another one of the tumors were. Um, the surgeon initially wanted to get all three of the tumors out of my liver, but unfortunately he wasn't able to do that because of the size that of the liver that he needed to take out. Um, and if he would have taken out both sides, then he would have basically left me with, um, virtually no liver. So the plan was to do the left side of my liver in May, which we did. And I responded really well to that surgery. I was only in the hospital for four days this time, only in the ICU for three days of the four days. So um, definitely a better response this time. And I was doing much better, you know, at home recovering. Plan was to have another surgery at the beginning of August to remove the right sided tumors on my liver. But I had a scan at the end of July, which showed that the cancer had now spread to my lungs, um, both right and left lobe. So then we kind of had to change treatment plans again. Um, my doctors wanted to start me on uh, chemotherapy called gemcitabine and um, doxytaxel. Uh, but unfortunately, my insurance company wouldn't cover it. Um, they said there's not enough research on this cancer to prove that those medications would be effective. Um, we fought with the insurance company throughout the entire month of August. Um, we tried doing peer-to-peer -peer reviews. We tried... Um, uh, appealing it um, several times. I even provided them with documentation that shows there's a paper that says once you've exhausted these treatments, you can try this chemotherapy regi regimen for ACC and it should work. Um, and they denied all of that. So we had to switch gears again and basically start from square one. So now I'm back on EDP, the atopicide doxyrubicin, but this time they're doing carboplatin instead of cisplatin because it's less toxic on my kidneys. My biggest complaints throughout this whole process have been fatigue and nausea. Um, and I'm grateful too with radiation. I really didn't have any side effects of that either, except for some more fatigue. Um, so they just have me on a bunch of like as needed medications for the nausea, um, which sometimes I'll take and sometimes I won't take. Um, they were having me come in a few times just to get extra hydration and extra IV anti-nausea medication. So I did that a few times as well. Um, but I, I have to say, you know, aside from the bald head, um, if you look at me, you wouldn't know that I have cancer because I, I don't have 
many of the side effects that other cancer patients experience. You know, I'm not, I'm not in pain. I'm still able to be active and take my girls to their activities. I take them to school every day. Um, I try to work out, you know, walking on the treadmill or riding my bike. Um, I help out around the house and do chores and um, all of that. So I, I try to stay as active as I can. So I am grateful that my side effects have been pretty minimal this, this journey. I told my husband that I want to do anything and everything I can to fight this. So I started um, doing juices every day, like making my own juices at home um, and drinking those. I started, um, I made an appointment to see a holistic doctor as well, just to see if there are any supplements that I should be on that can help fight the cancer. Um, and I met with her and got, you know, a really good list of things to try. Um, and then the chemotherapy as well. Um, and actually, when I talked to the holistic doctor, she said, you know, the supplements that I'm taking plus the chemotherapy, it kind of all works together to help kill the cancer cells and starve the cancer cells. Um, I also started doing, um, it's called the COC protocol, which is based out of the UK. Um, and with that, you basically take four different medications that are prescribed for other um, diseases. So like Lipitor, which is usually for high cholesterol, metformin, which is usually for diabetes, doxycycline, which is usually an antibiotic, and fenbenazole, which is an antiparasitic. And those four medications combined also help starve the cancer cells. So I started doing that at the beginning of August as well. And this is like the first time in a long time that I really feel like everything that I'm doing in combination is going to give me the good results that I've finally been waiting for. I'm feeling like very positive. I've been in a really good mindset lately um, that I, I just know like this treatment plan is what I need to be on and what's going to work to help shrink the tumors. The biggest thing is my family. You know, I'm, I'm young. I'm 35 years old. I've been married to my husband for, um, I, I always forget this. It'll be six years now. Um, in October, it'll be six years. Um, and we have two little girls. I have a five-year-old and I have a three and a half-year-old. And I don't want them to grow up without a mom. I want to be there. I want them to, you know, remember me, you know, being healthy and active and being there for them and taking to their, you know, taking them to their activities. I don't want them to not remember me. And, you know, I don't want to die and have them, you know, grow up, grow up without a mom. So they're like my biggest reason that I fight. I think it's important to know about cancer. I think people people are afraid to talk about it. Um, if there's one thing I've kind of learned this last year, it's like people don't really know what to say to me. You know, I've, I've been through a lot and I know I've been through a lot, but I feel like a lot of people don't know what to say to me. So sometimes they say nothing at all. And and sometimes that's kind of worse than, you know, saying something. Um, and But with this cancer especially, you know, like I told you earlier, I've been battling insurance companies with treatments and procedures and medications. And I don't think it should be that way. You know, it's bad enough that you've got cancer, but to have to be battling insurance companies to get things approved is a stress that you shouldn't have to deal with. So I just want to bring more awareness to this cancer um, so that there can be more research, more funding, um, and more treatment options for patients like me. So when you're, you know, at the end of the road, I don't want them to say, you know, we've done everything. There's nothing more we can do. You know, you're screwed. Basically, I want, I want there to always be an option. I want there to be, you know, something in their back pocket to, that they can bring out and help treat these, you know, patients like me that have this cancer. Never quit. You know, do what you have to do. Advocate for yourself a hundred percent. Every time I go to the doctor, I have a list of questions. What treatments can we try? What um, doctors can we consult on my case? What surgeries can we do? What procedures can we do? Um, is there, you know, second opinions that you're going to get from, you know, other physicians throughout the country? Um, the biggest thing is just don't give up, you know, there's always going to be another option. There should never be an end all. This is it. There's nothing more we can do. You know, I don't want people to ever give up. I want them to always keep fighting. Um, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to keep fighting. You know, there's, I'm never going to quit. I'm always going to keep moving forward, positive mindset, get as many opinions as I have to, to know that I'm going to beat the cancer. I'm going to be one of, one of the odds. I will beat those odds um, and, and beat this cancer. I'm determined. <laughs>